The Space Wolves are one of the most character-filled 40K factions and one that we love a lot. We're super excited to be showing them to you here in 9th edition because we've been playtesting them for a while and having a lot of fun with them. So today what we're going to do is take you through some of the things that got better with the faction, some of the few things that got worse, as well as some new tactics and a few army lists. So why don't we jump in and take a look. At their core, these are still Space Marines, yep. and so they benefit from a lot of the things that Space Marines did. But actually, this faction is different and unique in a lot of special ways that really transform the way they play in 9th edition against other Space Marine factions. It really does. So one of the things that's amazing about them um, that's really important in 9th edition is their uh, amazing troops uh, choices. Yes. Right? We're talking about, uh, we want to make this important distinction, both the Primaris uh, units, like the new Assault inter Intercessors, and the older units, the, the Stunties, as some of you call them, um, are, like the Blood Clods, are amazing. They both have great uses. Yes. Uh, they both, they both uh, make make the army play in this unique style of hitting super hard, hitting very accurately, um, and it's, it's just very flavorful yeah. and they have options. We, you know, you don't have to be taking troops in 9th edition yeah. to fill those battalions, but you do want objective secured. In Absolutely. our test games, we found objective secured to be an extremely so valuable rule. Yeah. So whenever you have troop choices in your army that also happen to be some of the best models in your faction, yeah. you're in a good place. And anytime you've got nice infantry models, that really can uh, sit on that th those kind of objectives, mm -hmm. um, then you're in a really good place. And, and we really love, um, as you say, Assault Intercessors with this faction, money. So good. <laughs> it really is. And even just the Blood Claws um, in particular, we really love those. So uh, you're going to be in good company if you'd be taking a lot of those uh, uh, troop choices and bring them into your list, you're going to do well with them. Yeah, especially talking about the Blood Claws, the fact that they can fit in the transport. The transports are kind of the things that we've talked about before that we think yeah. are extremely useful. With regular Marines, you're saying, oh, I'm putting TAC Marines. They don't really do much other than sit on points right. uh, and, and usually die. Uh, but the Blood Claws actually hit quite hard, so it gives yeah, you that extra they're super utility. Scary. I, I've underestimated them on way too many occasions, yeah. so so it's really it, it, it's great. It makes them really fun and actually quite uh, versatile. Yeah. So the other change, of course, is the fact that pretty much uh, most armies are getting more command points than they used to have. Right. You no longer have to take three battalions or a brigade or whatever to get the maximum number of command points. Uh, now everyone starts with twelve, and you can subtract from there. Uh, Space Wolves, especially after Psychic Awakening, are a very command point hungry army. Yes. Uh, they have just so many useful and versatile stratagems that more command points is just a huge change for them. Yeah, this is one of those armies that if you pump more and more CP yeah. into a single unit, you can make it kind of god mode. Yeah. Um, and they actually have that kind of thing where you could pump like three separate strats into one <laughs> fight phase. Right. This is actually, I'm not underestimating, I think it's like five separate strats oh, totally. into one unit fighting and just make it a god killer. Yeah. And they want to do that, but it's really pricey, right? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. um, and they really struggled to get even a double, definitely not a triple battalion, but even a double battalion was quite a tax because they have such expensive elite units. And now right. you could build those elite builds if you wanted to. I'm, talk I'm talking Thunderwolves, Terminators, uh, um, obviously Wolfen. Yeah. All of these things, super pricey. You could build armies around them and come out with a ton of CP, which you need because these are elite units. And without their stratagems, you're not going to get you're not going to get the value out of them. At the end of the day, it actually is secretly uh, an elite army Super for, elite. for all the reasons that you already said. So this is actually this is a re actually a really great boost. Um, and again, just more opportunities to also play well, right? Yeah. A good space wolf player, you're going to have such a deep bag of tricks oh, now yeah. that you just couldn't use before. It's like, well, I'm going to use these strats, but I'm going to burn through my command points. and not going to have lasting power. So that's really exciting uh, change. Yeah. The other thing I love about the space wolves is dreadnoughts. We've got yeah. a lot of them here on the table, and they're one of the most improved mm -hmm. units. In ninth edition, because vehicles can move and shoot yep. and shoot in combat, um, I think that is a huge improvement to them. And their their dreadnoughts are exceptional, and this makes them even better. They are so <laughs> scary. Um, one of the, you would traditionally see lots of the uh, the, the sword and the board, the shield yeah. and, and and the claws, and that was amazing. It was scary, but now it's also exciting to run things like assault cannons with a claw oh, yeah. or something like that. These these are very versatile units that benefit from all the things that space wolves have to offer. That plus one to hit, um, the assault doctrine, all these things. Um, so it's it's really exciting uh, yeah. for that. And even just like the space wolves' of, uh, key abilities with the for the pluses to hit and the extra right. hits. They work super well with these Dreadnoughts. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm definitely cool. looking forward to Dreadnought-centric builds. <laughs> um, for this army, I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I also think that one of the key things to remember is these Dreadnoughts actually have a pretty affordable points cost. They do. If you looked at yeah. some of the new points, a lot of things went up in this army, but they're actually still very reasonably pointed. 
for how killy and durable they are, so they're going to be a great choice. Yeah, they're sitting very comfy, uh, and we think they make a great addition to any army, but you could also go super heavy into the Dreadnoughts, and that'd sure. be a really fun, uh, a really fun, awesome list to play. Uh, the other thing, of course, that they gained, and this is kind of the bane of a lot of Space Wolf players, is yeah. the 5-inch vertical engagement range that this we now huge. have. It used yeah. to be, well, there's some Thunderwolves coming, some Dreadnoughts coming, I'm going to scamper up this rune, and they can't hang me, they can't charge me. They were just shaking their fist <laughs> at you. you. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, man, so many games I won just by standing on a second yeah. floor against these Thunderwolves. And they're just, they're like, it's like a 500 point unit right. just circling the bottom, <laughs> you know? And I'm up there with my crisis suits just shooting down at them. And it's, that's, that sucked. Yeah. Uh, and that it sucked for everybody. It didn't, it didn't feel good. <laughs> and, way. and now that you can fight up, it makes these <laughs> combat builds so much more viable. Um, uh, for, it makes these units particularly more viable. I'm really into this change. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and then there's one thing to just mention about the uh, the new vehicle changes, right? So we've said how they're great for Dreadnoughts, uh, moving and shoot, shooting in combat, um, but they're also great for a lot of the other uh, units that you have, uh, any of the tanks, we're talking about Land Raiders, we're talking about Predators, Razorbacks are super tasty. Yeah. Again, this is a Space Marine army, and they have all these things that also will benefit greatly from not really caring if they get tagged, right? Ultimately, if you look at the range of old school Marines yeah. and their vehicles, they are universally better, and this mm -hmm. is the faction that does old school Marines better than any other. So. And when we're talking about the vehicles, particularly those Razorbacks and those Predators, mm -hmm. that's not it, obviously. All the old tanks are great, but Razorbacks and Predators in particular shine. I like them a lot. And in this army, they work really, really well because the Razorbacks have some of the most valuable units to put inside in the form mm -hmm. of Blood Claws, and the Predator yeah. works the best because this is the only faction that still has Kill Shot. It's a huge deal. And so having Kill Shot in addition to these predators that move and shoot now, um, it's a big bonus. And it's not only that that it's not only that combination, the mm. new terrain rules mm -hmm. allow you to keep your predators safe on first turn. Right. So then you get to do that kill shot. And it means you get to keep them safe, come up, touch the cover, shoot through it. And in a worst case scenario where you've got planet bowling ball, you can now outflank using the base outflank rules, which you didn't used to be able to do, guaranteeing <laughs> that you kill shot before your opponent kills your tanks. You never used to have oh that guarantee. Oh my gosh. No, I mean, you remember at the beginning of 8th edition, it was, oh, well, yeah. do I get to go first? Are we going to kill them before they can do kill shot and things like that? Luckily, uh, you can all but guarantee it unless they have yeah. a ton of line of sight ignoring, um, which is great. You can at least do your trick, and it is one heck of a it's trick. It's a great trick. I'll tell you that. Um, so that's that's really nice. It feels so dust, good to build a Dust off stuff. your predators. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, get those assault cannons on your Razorbacks. You're going to be getting them on the table. It's going to be great. Exactly. And one of the reasons it's great is because ultimately the game is about midboard mm -hmm. control. It is. And we think that kind of midboard control with Razorbacks and Blood Claws um, as the backbone. Mm -hmm. This army is fantastic at midboard control. They're just yeah. so fighty. The heroic interventions are great. They never used to be able to survive going all the way across the table. Right. But they can make it to midboard. Absolutely. One of the one of the other ways traditionally that you would you would fight space wolves is by just back back backing it up, step yeah. away, step away, uh, and kind of shoot them to death. Um, at this point in ninth edition, if you do that, uh, you could kill all of them by the end of the game, and you're probably going to lose. Honestly, yeah. They're holding those midpoints. They're saying, "You come towards us. Yeah. We're going to intervene. Like, out, like we're going to do That's a right. bunch of crazy moves. We're going to hit you back. Uh, they're not the easiest things to remove. Let's be honest, especially some of the the more choice units here." Um, and so they're just super happy to be playing that mid-board game. Yeah, they're going to be picking up their primary and secondary. Yeah. And uh, if you come and try to battle them for that mid-board, really almost no one outfights this faction, it's right? It's so, so scary. Yeah. Um, just the, the amount of tricks that they can do when you get close, all the different buffs that they can layer that before you kind of had to keep pushing forwards. And it was tough. You say, okay, I need to keep, you know, Arjak next to right. Ragnar, next to whatever, and, and, and do that. But now the game sort of lends itself well to synergizing across a couple points on the board. So yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I, I honestly, there's no combat faction in the game that shouldn't be scared. Now, obviously, yeah. there's lots of combat factions that if they fight you first, you're in trouble. But, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, thankfully, there's new tools to deal with that. You uh, always have the Belt of Rust. You always have, and you have the, the Judicars now too, right? I know. So between the Belt of Rust and the Judicars, this army is fighting first for days. It's pretty sweet. And uh, not only is it fighting first, so it's killing you first. That's uh, right. The board. One of the other things that this army used to suffer from terribly was mm -hmm. Overwatch. That's right. And so this is one of those factions that benefits a ton from Overwatch. They had maybe limited abilities to get around it, but ultimately mm -hmm. their units were very fragile and fairly expensive. Yeah. And yeah. you couldn't afford to lose even one or two of them, or your combat potential would drop a lot. Yeah, they suffered a lot from that kind of incidental Overwatch fire. They'd be like, here's some Lazian, some Bolters, whatever, which would honestly shred things like the Blood Claws, which are not the cheapest things in the world, That's to right. be honest. Um, and combine that with the fact that they are an army that generally wants to be charging lots of things. This hurt a lot, 
And now, you know, you can Overwatch with one unit, which is fine for them because they're throwing in a ton of different charges. So yeah. what used to be a, a big problem for them is actually the big, their big benefit. I agree. So. I think this is a nice improvement for them. Okay, but why don't we take a look at some of the things that really uh, are negatives for them yeah. in this new edition? Because honestly, some. not everything is always rosy. Yep. And one of the big ones is the fact that the characters, uh, the, the Space Wolves characters are the heart of the army, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're one of the things that make it tick. Yeah. And character targeting now is way easier than ever. Yeah. It's a lot harder for those characters to be independent. Think of those Thunderwolf characters you had to, used to oh have my gosh, just right? running around. Now they can be targeted, and uh, that's a big loss for this army. It really is. Uh, don't forget that now, if you're not within three inches of an enemy, and also uh, just kind of visible, you can be shot at. So it's, it is very, very possible now to get uh, get your screen shot out from underneath. You can't be throwing in a character on the side, which you'd see a lot, again, because you're like, yes. here's all my wolf and my dreads, and then you have like some crazy character coming down the side, and he was fine because he was farther away. That's right. That's going to have to change. Again, it, there are ways of getting around it. This army does it's do well to play, play central. Style. Yeah. But essentially, yeah. But uh, but it is a thing, and you, it, it is going to catch, catch you off guard. Definitely yeah. has us a few times. We're like, here, I'm coming on up. And they're like, uh, I'm going to shoot your This character. is one of the biggest rough, mistakes man. you're going to find yourself making at 100%. the start of the new edition. 100%. And actually, one of the key tactics we're going to show you a little later yep. is how to screen your target your characters correctly. Because yep. for this army, more than most, it's super crucial. Um, another thing is that... Heroic intervention was kind of the core trick of this faction. Mm -hmm. You could heroically intervene those six inches. Great. And what you used to be able to do with this is heroically intervene into people that had just charged, and you could fight them, but they couldn't fight you if they didn't declare you as a target. Right. And that was an amazing ability. But now, in Ninth Edition, if you heroically intervene, everyone can still fight you. That's right. And so you're not safe anymore if you heroically <laughs> intervene. Uh, you can be fought. So you need to be a lot more careful about who you heroically intervene into. Yeah, that six-inch uh, heroic intervention is is incredible, and you're gonna have, yeah. and you're gonna be able to use it to kind of find, find ways of getting around that. But one of the reasons it was so powerful before was, you know, you'd say, well, I'm gonna be outside of the twelve. It's only a six-inch charge that's to right. the troops, and then I'm gonna intervene in, be completely immune. Um, but now that's definitely not the case. Uh, you know, even Arjak, for example, uh, in our recent game, died to bloodletters, right? Yeah. Like it does happen. The, um, they're yeah. they're not that tough. No. They hit crazy. <laughs> they punch way right. above their weight. But they're not that tough. No. So ultimately, that's the key. And, and that's it's another one of the tactics we'll show you a little later. It is. Is how to get the most out of those heroic interventions without risking your, your uh, Ragnar <laughs> or something like that. Um, the other thing is that uh, screening, we think, is mm -hmm. going to become more prevalent in the game yeah. with the addition of a lot more MSU, a lot mm -hmm. more desire to screen. The board is smaller. It's easier to screen. Yeah. And this army suffers from screens because they don't have a lot of fly or ways to get up and around them. Right. So they have to charge into those screens, meaning it slows their advance up the board and it means more turns to get shot at. That's a really tough thing to get around for this faction. It really is, and this has always been a problem, and it, it's only gotten worse in this edition, uh, combined with this with the fact that speculative charging is gone. If they have a yeah. screen, again, six inches away, and now they have their character nine inches away, you can't really declare the nine inch, because if you don't reach that character, then you can't charge anyone. So these yeah. screens are going to be really, really scary for this army. Um, it's going to continue to be a problem. Yeah, uh, those screens used to be great. You yeah. could maybe wrap them or something. Right. Yeah. Now people can just screen you like you crazy. You slingshot off of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think I think a really smart person with a lot of great screens mm -hmm. could really slow your advance down and Speaking give them a lot of turns to shoot at you. Yeah. Speaking of getting shot at, that's, <laughs> that was always the bane of this army, right? Yeah. You can't outfight this army, but you can easily outshoot this mm -hmm. faction, right? Totally. Um, this army does not shoot particularly uh, well for no. its points cost, and they do die because they are super elite. And what you used to have to do is hide within ruins or move through uh, up within buildings so you right. couldn't be seen. Now, though, when you're inside a piece of terrain, as long as there's windows or line of sight, you could be targeted. That's right. And so you're often going to find yourself having to make these tough decisions of, do I want to get as close as I can to the enemy and be yeah. visible, or am I, going to sit, am I going to stay behind the obscuring terrain and be completely out of line of sight? Yeah. On the other hand, they can still get the angles to see you. You're obviously not getting cover anymore. You say, exactly. well, we're going to stay with our two-up armor saves in this ruin until it's time to charge out. That is actually a really big hit um, that's going to, again, will become more apparent as you play games because it, it really forces some difficult decisions for melee armies like this. Yeah, the one big thing I will say is uh, if you're finding this too much of a problem in your own home games, mm -hmm. think about modifying your terrain to reduce yeah. the amount of line of sight. We've been doing that here in our own game, so if you come and watch some of our games, you'll see yeah. that we're generally picking terrain that at least has some true blocking um, because otherwise it becomes a little too shooty. And you're not going to, this army would suffer a lot from that. They really will. And especially in the beginning of the edition, you know, people are figuring out what's, what's a good terrain setup, things like that. That's um, right. Unfortunately, armies like this will suffer until we kind of come to an agreement as a community on different standards. So that's a really good idea about doing yeah. it in your own home or tournaments or whatever. Yeah, one of the yeah. main reasons people come to this faction is for the crazy 
weird iconic units, right? <laughs> space Marines riding wolves yeah. or like werewolf, werewolf space, space Marines. Marines. This is the reason you play this of faction course. because this shit's weird. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, these uh, units, these iconic units actually went quite a bit up in points. Yeah. And they were already kind of pricey. Now, everyone knows they hit hard, no mm -hmm. doubt. Sure. But <laughs> they still die hard too. Like they, they do. go down. And um, I think that they went up a little too much compared to mm -hmm. other things. And they're going to be a tough option to field many of. They are. I think you could still splash them in now and then, but man, there's a, they're not the best choices points-wise. Yeah, that's definitely... A, um, the, the Thunderwolf Cavalry in particular just continue to take hits. In 8th edition, they took these same exact hits and it just continues. So, unfortunately, you know, if you love them, we love them. Yeah. We definitely play them uh, for fun, but they definitely are going to be more limited in an army. It's hard to kind of build a whole thing around it. Yeah, especially um, if you want to put, like, uh, thunder thunder hammers on them or something. And the storm shield. Like if you so want to put a thunder hammer storm shield on these guys, like you're you're getting into like a custodes bike price point. But you can't fly um, and can't shoot. But you do have a, <laughs> you do have a dog. That's right. You have a cybernetic superpower dog. Yeah. So, so. it's 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 fifty fifty. <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I do think that's going to be a tough a tough problem. Okay. Well, yeah, why don't we look ahead and uh, take a look at some of those stratagems or strategies that we were talking about? Yeah. And show you how to get the most out of uh, your space. Sounds good. As we said, characters are at the heart of this faction, and keeping them alive is harder than ever with the new Lookout Sir rule. Mm -hmm. And what it means is you need to be within three inches of a friendly unit that either has uh, three or more models or is a vehicle or monster. That's right. And most of the time, your troop units are kind of paper thin. Yeah. So if you're trying to screen your characters with some troop units, that doesn't work as well as it used to. We have a scenario here where we're going to show a few things that have changed and a mm -hmm. few ways to think about it a little differently. Absolutely. So let's take a look. So we have, of course, um, our intrepid heroes here, the Space Wolves, facing off against some disgusting Xenos Tau. That's right. Uh, you know. And uh, so they're lined up all up over here. The first thing I want to highlight is, um, let's talk about the units. We have, of course, the Razorback here, Double Assault. We have a couple of the Wolf and Dreads. We have a good old Bjorn. Uh, and we have the young Wolf Ragnar here. And a small unit of Blood Claws. Now, previously, uh, you would want to have the blood claws behind this ruin, right? Even in the new edition, they're not touching it, so they're still obscured. Can't see them. That's right. Um, but they are closer to uh, closer to the uh, to, to the, the tile yeah. than the character. So in eighth edition, you would absolutely be screening, and this would be great because the blood claws would melt like nothing, nothing That's business. Right. Um, no longer the case, right? And you'd essentially be invincible here. No one can absolutely. shoot your troops. Yep. No one can reach your characters. It's a perfect setup. Hundred percent. You're not going to have these setups nope. nearly as often. And so what we have here instead are the two characters within three inches of all three vehicles. Now that's, that's right. crucial because if you're only in range of one of those vehicles, mm -hmm. people could spot that, pop that vehicle, and then take into your characters. So 100%. you don't just want to have one thing screening a character. You always want to have a couple. And we really like not just the Dreadnoughts, but the Razorback. That's great. Because the Razorback could have troops inside of it. Mm -hmm. So even when you pop it, there's a second target that can jump out. Exactly. This this layering uh, and these re redundancies become even That's more right. important. And the, the the thing about the layering is the fact that, again, this is one big, big shooty unit, and we do have many armies that are kind of set up like that, right? That's right. Where they have these big shooty powers. You're not going to have line of sight with your whole army. Um, and so forcing them to say, well, you can kill this thing, but you're not going to be able to also target the unit that, that's inside, right? Whereas here, they could try to split fire if they had enough shots, that's but right. a transport just holds a unit that is physically not on the board yet. And so that's yeah. a huge advantage. We've seen it matter a lot. Another quirk of the new rules oh. is that you don't always have to be next to right. the unit that is the one screening you, per mm -hmm. se. So what we have is Bjorn, let's say he's pretty fast. Yeah. So he made his way out front in front of these other two dreadnoughts, but yep. he's still within three inches. But this Razorback has zipped up the board now, and it's no longer within three inches of Bjorn. That's right. But the way the new character targeting rule, you need to be both the close, the character needs to be both the closest model and not, uh, within, not within three. three. And so in this case, nice. this Razorback is the closest model. Right. And it is also within three of another model. This character is effectively untargetable at this point. It's definitely a weird thing that that didn't pop up in, until we'd actually started playing. We said, "Oh, actually, this is this is interesting. This is kind of the way that we we're used to playing it previously, and it is still somewhat possible in these situations." And again, you know, just to reiterate, we do have this Razorback here. They can try to pop the Razorback, but even after they do that, if we have some blood blood, blood claws, they pop out. Now we're still blocking for Bjorn. Um, just really powerful combinations that uh, you'll have to kind of keep an eye out for when they pop up uh, and and take advantage of them. Yeah, one of the things to keep in mind is this kind of character blocking won't happen by accident. No. You have to do it very deliberately exactly. every turn, every movement phase. But before that, 
You have to put it into your list construction. Mm -hmm. When you are planning to bring several key characters, you have to think who is their bodyguard unit. Yes. Who is the unit that they are going to stay with at almost all times? Who is the one that's going to protect them up the board? You may even want to build your list differently to say, I'm going to take a slightly bigger squad than I normally take, or I'm going to take this Dreadnought specifically to, to shield for this character. Um, you need to consider it right from list construction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's just something that, that, yeah, like you said, it can't happen by accident. You're going to have to consider this from the very, very beginning. Um, and it's going to be some different roles, right? It might be a Dreadnought that previously you would have just thrown, thrown forwards or not taken right. because they don't do much other than just be tough, right? So reevaluating these units that can, can take on these new roles becomes really important. Again, when was the last time you saw things like a Razorback um, and suddenly they, have, they become very useful for these specific they've, scenarios, they've several right? Uses, right? Yeah, we're not just throwing them in because we can. They, they have all these specific yeah. things that we want to do with them over the course of the game. This is the thing that you're going to make so many mistakes with at the start of the edition, I yeah. think. <laughs> and you've got to get used to it. Like if you've got Ragnar and your Dreadnought and you're about to move them, mm -hmm. you want to advance them both. Which one do you move first? Right. Right? In my opinion, you probably move Ragnar first, mm -hmm. and then you could see how far the Dreadnought needs to move, but you need to make sure that if Ragnar rolls uh, six on his advance and can move 12, your Dreadnought wants to stay in front. Right, and how so, much are you, you know risking? I mean? How much are you risking? Yeah. So it's like you could choose, pick and choose. Are you gonna advance one before the other? And if you have a whole lot of characters across your army, little decisions about who you advance first mm -hmm. and uh, where you move is gonna be crucial so that you're always staying within bubble range and don't make little mistakes where you're out. Yeah, this becomes doubly doubly true for an army like this where they have several different move uh, characteristics and the army doesn't have fly, right? That's right? It's very unforgiving if you mess up one of these moves. You can't kind of go back and get them back within three and all these things. So that is going to be an art form in and of itself moving yeah. forwards. All right, let's take a look at another example. As we know, the heroic intervention ability of Space Wolf characters is legendary. That's right. And as we talked about before, it is slightly modified. So we're gonna show you how to keep your characters safe whilst making use of this amazing ability. Absolutely. So what we have here is uh, we have uh, the young king Ragnar, we have five blood claws. Uh, we're again at that min squad, partially because we're generally, generally running them like that. Yeah. It lets you spread out like this. Um, and they're defending an important objective. Exactly. Uh, and then we have, of course, 20 or so boys here backed up by a war boss who's probably the biggest boss, so he's pretty oh, scary. He's we're big. definitely worried. Well, we're, we're not worried because we're space wolves. We used but... to be able to heroically intervene into him yep. and exactly. survive. But now we have to be a little more careful, right? Exactly. So what's happening here is this is a, a medium to longish charge, very doable with things like orcs. Um, but the thing is, uh, they couldn't even declare uh, declare a, a, an attack, a charge against Ragnar because they're outside of 12. So normally we'd say, cool, they can't declare us. We're going to intervene. We're going to hit them super hard. They can't do anything. We get a whole extra round of combat. That is definitely not so. That's the case. So even if they make their charge here, so all of our boys come in, mm -hmm. they make the charge, no yep. problem. Now, our boss also comes in for the charge and lands somewhere here, right? right? Now, historically, we would probably go into the boss mm -hmm. because he couldn't totally. fight us. Then we would fight him and drop him, and he's a high-value target. He really is. We'd leave the blood claws. Well, the blood claws would die. But, you know, that would be that. Would be that. <laughs> At least job, we'd get yeah. a good value out of this. Now, though, if we piled into the boss... A big boss could squish, squish Ragnar. We definitely and take that a would just be that would be sad. Oh, absolutely. So you'll notice we actually haven't. This is not set up haphazardly, right? What we've done is we've positioned position Ragnar so that he is within six inches of each and every person in this uh, squad the that we're front defending of with. each model. The front, exactly. So basically, if they had they had some extra movement on the charge, uh, the boss wants to get as close as he can to Ragnar. Things like that make it difficult so that we couldn't. Uh, you know, let's say if, if, if he got into the middle or whatever, uh, it's hard for us to avoid, right? That's right. Um, but now, since everyone in this unit is within six, we get our, our pick of, let's say, okay, he's at this end. Well, we can perfectly intervene over here using our coherency so we can fit even with that larger base. That's right. And we can fight without ever worrying about this war boss over here. In fact, if they got a little too greedy with their charge, I would even take the outside on this. So, so despite anything, no yeah. double fighting, nothing can actually have them reach our character. That's exactly right. So you can see here, you had to be very thoughtful about how to place your blood claws in relation yeah. to your character, right? We wanted to be within three of our unit, but we also wanted to be within six of the front of every model. That's right. And we wanted to leave spaces for our base to go through mm -hmm. every model. It's actually a very particular a kind lot. of placement. <laughs> and this is only two units. If we had a swarm of units, oh, yeah. you'd have to leave little channels <laughs> for several characters. Mm -hmm. And you want to leave spots where the characters can go in multiple places so that you have agency, you have choice. You're gonna have to be much more tactical about it. And this is the kind of stuff that makes me really love melee as a player. It's the finesse of where you're setting up, where you're doing yeah. your counter, counter charges, things like that, that again, 
it is it is a downside um, to to them in the new edition, but there's some really exciting new tactics that you can employ of course. to negate that and in fact some, in some cases turn it on, on its head. Yeah, they're more, expecting to be able to attack more you, More right? often than not, I actually think you'll get to use this ability because yeah. people will need to come and take objectives from you, mm -hmm. which means you get to set up these mini castles, these little trap cards, yep. and people have to come and deal with them, yep. and uh, and now you get, to, you get to play your trap. And the thing is, remember, everyone's having to deal with this, right? There's so many armies that wanted to intervene and, and do these kinds of strategies, but most of them only have that three inch, which takes away so many of these options. You definitely want to be practicing it, but for Space Wolf, so you can really max out on it and it's really exciting. Yeah, and yeah. imagine the person heroically intervening could easily be like a, a Judicar or something or a, someone <laughs> with a belt right. of rust to make you fight last. It, these, these, these are not just heroically intervening to fight. Right. They'll change the face of the entire games. So you master this and some of your castles will just be unassailable because you've done this correctly. That's the idea. All right, well, why don't we take a look at some of the army list ideas we have. There are a lot of viable armies that you could build with this. Mm -hmm. As you said, because they're ultimately Space Marines, yep. you have that entire Primaris line uh, that are amazing. Lots of bits. We love the fact that the old school Marines can work for this army. <laughs> so we're going to show you some armies that work with old school Marines. Absolutely. That's, uh, this is one of the few factions <laughs> that can do it well. Mm -hmm. And the first faction, or the first kind of uh, um, army list we want to talk about is a Razorback Rush. Yep. Um, that we think plays the mission pretty well. We really do. Um, if you have seen our other videos, we've talked about how important we think transports are in the new edition. Yeah. They let you play that board control of the game, they let you get up there, they let you protect bodies until it's time to deliver them, and combine this with the fact that, again, they have great troops put inside them, the Blood Claws. Uh, this list looks at running six Razorbacks. Only with six? Only six. Okay. It's tragic. I'll go with it. You think we could put more? I, I think you, maybe one day. <laughs> so here, so here's, here's, here's the thing. We're, in this list, we're looking at six of them filled with uh, assault cannons and the uh, blood claws. Right. And then we're also going to back it up with three predators. Classic. Um, awesome. We like it a lot. Like we said, um, there's going to be a lot of experimentation that happens as far as how much can you just play the board control game and how much do you actually need to kill things, right? So the predators, the predators are in this list yeah. in general. Because it is just so good, it is so hard to pass up mm -hmm. how efficient and powerful those are. And for yeah. an army that doesn't shoot, you should be scared. I don't care what you've got on the other side of the table, you should be scared. It's super scary. And uh, the rest of this faction, the rest, sorry, the rest of this list doesn't have a lot of tank killing. No. It actually has none. It has amazing horde clearing. Right, and you're running, so you're running Bjorn and Ragnar, which are like, you know. Yeah, they can kill anything, but that's not, <laughs> that's not a lot of tank killing. No, that's what I'm saying, yeah. And, and so <laughs> you've, got the, you've got horde killing for days. Right. But you need some tank killing, and the you Predators do. are a fairly inexpensive way for under 500 points, right, to, to drop anything. Yeah, because you do need to have something to defend against uh, whatever is going to be killing your Razorbacks, right? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, like we said, it's going to be, you're going to be able to control the, that first attack, generally speaking. If you want to keep your Predators hidden in order to get that, that uh, kill shot and, and strike first with them, you will be able to. And then once they're out, the, the opponent's honestly going to have to decide which is the bigger threat. Probably taking down at least one predator, but after that, they still have to say, "I have to kill these razorbacks. They're flooding the field. There's guys popping out of them." And so, what it, what this list tries to do is really play many parts of the game at the same time, yeah. getting that board control, hitting hard. I'm not saying you couldn't run like three or four more razorbacks, but sure. um, you know, that's a thought. It's worth trying. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, let's try it one day. I, I I love this because it's so classic. You get nine old school tanks. It's just cool. A bunch of old school marines. Yeah. This is rad. There's people out there like us who have this faction. Uh, and have those models, you can dust them off, and you can really rock people with we this. We still want to give them the load. That, that yeah, this is going to be great. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about the next one. And uh, this one we're calling somewhat of a Dreadnought party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's because the Dreadnoughts are great, mm -hmm. so we're leaning into a handful of Dreadnoughts in this That's one. right. So this plays, if you thought the last one was a board control overload, this is threat control, uh, threat <laughs> overload. That's right. It is tons of Dreadnoughts. So, of course, we're running Bjorn and Ragnar. We really don't think you want to start yeah. a list without him. Bjorn and Ragnar are both amazing. You have to. You, okay, I could, I could maybe see someone talking me into one day not playing Bjorn, but never not playing Ragnar. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. At like fair. 125 <laughs> points, Ragnar is a one-man Imperium. <laughs> Like he's still under cost. I yeah, think it's, it's ridiculous. No, he's exactly where the young wolf is supposed to be. He's amazing. <laughs> but Bjorn is a dreadnought, which yeah. fits, which fits with the rest of the list. Yeah, right. uh, we're talking about uh, Murder Fang. We're talking about two two of those uh, dreadnoughts with the claw and shield. The claws actually the really wolf and saucy. Dreadnoughts, yeah, exactly. Three Invictors. Um, the Invictors are actually part of the secret sauce. They're really of this important, list, yeah. right? Because the Invictors start up the board. Right. Now they're not dreadnoughts, but they're close enough. <laughs> they start up the board. And this allows you to put the pressure on early. Mm -hmm. Your opponent has to spend turn one, maybe even turn two, dropping yeah. them. 
that gives you the time for the rest of the dreadnoughts to rush up the board. They're cool also because they're one of the few few units that can almost guarantee you take advantage of things like Devastator Doctrine. Yeah, that's um, true. Because again, first turn, so many people can be like, I'm just gonna sit, I'm gonna hide. Then Victor's like, nope, you gotta deal with me right now. Also, <laughs> there's right. some Wolfen Dreads coming behind. So we really like that. Um, and to be honest, again, the Predators are really saucy. We like them yeah. a lot in the army. So we were playing around with still running three as this back fire base because if you thought it was hard to, to decide what you were shooting before in the other list, it's way harder now to have to take yeah. out those Predators while dealing with all these threats up in your face. We, a lot of fun. We do have a disclaimer on this list that Bridger <laughs> made us add the Triple Predators. Right. He loves these Triple Predators. We love Big them fan. too. But if you wanted to, you could drop them in this list. For more Dreadnoughts? For more Dreadnoughts. Yeah. That's right. That's 450 or 420 points of additional Dreadnoughts. Mm -hmm. At least one more Wolf and Dread and a bunch more whatever your pick of Dread is. Just go all in. <laughs> I think that's cool too. Dreadnoughts can kill vehicles, not as efficiently as Predators though. We like them a lot. Um, so we are definitely curious to see um, you, if you guys want to try these lists. If you have other ideas, definitely let us know online. Uh, we're so excited for the the deep, deep codex that is the Space Wolf yeah. um, army. And we're going to be playing uh, a game with these very shortly. Yep. And uh, we're going to show off maybe not, maybe somewhere in between these two lists, something a little more balanced. Because <laughs> we want to get in some of the iconic units yeah, as well, even though if they're overpriced. Um, so we're going to have a great battle report, and if you haven't seen, we've been doing tactic videos like these for basically every other faction. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of great stuff out there you won't, won't want to miss, and we have more coming up all the way until the launch day of 9th edition. Sounds good. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys very soon on the tabletop.